I grew up all my life glued to a computer. When I first started talking, I was already browsing through my uncle's computer, switching between games. By the time I was ten, I was talking over my family's MSN accounts and making them send each other awkward messages. I was ten at the time, so the messages were stuff like, "I hate you," or. Give me back my Power Ranger. As you could imagine, I had no friends growing up. I was bullied and pushed around a lot. I'm autistic, so I guess that was the reason. I don't know. Nor will I ever. My old man kept telling me that I should stand up for myself, that I had to show them I wasn't afraid. Truth is, I couldn't fight back. I tried, but my punches were weak, and my kicks would tickle. I spent the best part of six years thinking the only way I could fight back was by physically fighting them. Little did I know that the world I grew up in, the virtual world, was about to become the second life for everyone. From here on, my mistakes started to pile up. I was sixteen. Everyone was using Facebook, Twitter, whatever was popular. People flocked to it. I had a main bully, as you could say, Brock. Brock was the definition of an asshole. I guess it made him what I did to him easier to live with. Brock loved to brag. His girlfriend was hot. His figure was fit, and he was amazing at sports. His only downside was he was dumb as shit, and he hated anyone that excelled academically. Surprise, surprise! I was a smartass. I was incredibly good at problem solving. I guess that was the upside to my autism. He hated that, and proceeded to make my life a living hell. I tried fighting back again, using my weak body. Forgetting my strongest weapon was my mind. One day, I was browsing Facebook and found Brock as a suggested friend. He was in my world, and suddenly something clicked. I created a burn account, jazzed it up, and made it look legit. I added Brock as a friend, and proceeded to find out as much as I could about him. I found his girlfriend and added her too. I sent Brock an email from Facebook, claiming his account had been compromised, and to download a PDF file with our security measures updated. Of course, he fell for my fake message. He wanted to keep his account, so he downloaded the document. Fool! I had access to his laptop, and proceeded to find everything there was to know about him. I knew so much at that point in time. I could tell you where he was, what he was doing, and who he was doing it with. I had his laptop camera send me images every so often to know what he was up to. When his girlfriend came over, I was ready. I booted up my online dating application and started sending messages to Brock. Hey, baby, can't wait to see you tomorrow. Last week was a blast. I won't go into so much detail, but due to the fact that I knew where he was up to, it was easy to convince his girlfriend that the online babe was real. I didn't stop there. I downloaded on his laptop as much gay porn as I could find. At a time where homosexuality wasn't as accepted as it was today, you could imagine how his parents reacted to his fun drive. He didn't come back to school since then. My guess is that he moved out of town. I don't know. I don't care to look any more. To me, that was a small victory, and I relished in it. Now I wish I'd have stopped there. Oh God, I wish I'd have stopped there. But I was addicted. The feeling of justice being served by my hands was one I wanted and wanted more. 
so I targeted criminals, the type that used the dark web to hide and spread their filth. For four years straight, I was a pain in their asses. I was on the deep web outing paedophiles, rapists, heavy drug dealers, you name it. If they were online, I would make their lives a living hell. I thought I was being smart. I thought I was hiding myself pretty effectively. But shit, something was following me every step of the way, and it would soon tell me. I woke up one morning, as any normal day, made eggs and toast for breakfast, with a glass of orange juice, booted up my desktop, and browsed Reddit. The usual was on, guys complaining that something was overpowered, something was underpowered, the game designers weren't listening. The usual morning chuckle. Then I heard a ping. The Facebook Messenger notification sound. Funny. I didn't open Facebook yet. Maybe I did and I forgot. Would it make sense as I rarely open Facebook? It was odd, but not enough to sound any major alarms. A message from someone I don't know. Hey Danny, what's the weather like in Japan? What the hell? Weather in Japan? I'm on the other side of the world. The name read James Puckerson. On my other monitor, I started to go through his profile, trying to find any mutual friends. Someone I met at a party or something. I responded with, Sunny, I hope. Anyone who knows me knows I hate the rain. I kept looking, but nothing of interest popped up. James replied, Oh, a funny guy. Tell me, Danny, do you enjoy playing games? At this point, I thought he was referring to video games. Yeah, dude. What did you have in mind? League of Legends? RuneScape? I don't mind. Oh, Danny. I didn't mean one of those childish games. I mean a real game. You know, the type that involves putting one's life on the line? I let out a chuckle. Someone probably hacked my Facebook account, added this weird-ass account, and is now trolling me. This isn't a joke, Danny. I take these games extremely seriously. Okay, what? How did he know I laughed? Did he guess? There's no way he can see me. My camera isn't even plugged in. And how could he have gotten into my apartment? My Facebook profile had a fake address on it and I never used my real address for anything, not even Amazon or eBay. This had to be a joke. I wrote, Sure dude, I'm bored as hell anyway. I was buying time to try and find out where this son of a bitch was. I scoured everywhere, trying to find any small clue to latch onto. I found something, and kept going and looking into it more, eventually leading me up to an address. When I looked at the address, I froze. I could feel my blood draining from my face. It was my address. I was the only one living there. But somehow this asshole was using my address as a cover. Ping. Another message. I see you've gone extremely pale, Danny. What's the matter? Don't you believe in ghosts? I couldn't move. This guy could see me. He knew every move I was making, and I didn't know what to do. Do I run away and burn everything down? Fry my hard drives and shred my motherboard? What the hell's going on? Ring, ring, Danny. My phone started to ring, but it wasn't James. The caller ID read, Mum. I pick up. I hesitate to speak. I can't show my mum. I'm afraid that she'd worry. So I tried to act cool. Hey, mum. Everything all right? What I heard next made me drop my phone in horror. It made me realize this shit was real, and this wasn't a joke. A voice obviously modulated to hide the identity of the caller, but the threat was real, and I knew who it was. Hey, Danny. What's the weather like in Japan? I stood frozen in horror. Panic swept over my body. 
and thoughts flooded my mind. What happened to my mother? Is she okay? What is this son of a bitch doing with her phone? I knew I had to calm down. Something didn't seem right. I picked up the phone and looked at the caller ID. It said mum, no number. Shit, how could I be so stupid? He was just masking his caller ID. He must be trying to throw me off balance. I'll play along. There must be something I'm missing. Well, what are you doing with my mum's phone? Where is she? Is she okay? A laugh came from the other end. A deep, distinguished laugh. I decided to record the call. Maybe I can play around with the recording to find this caller's real voice. It may not be much, but this asshole knows where I live, and probably who my parents are. Then he starts talking. Danny, Danny, Danny. The safety of your mother depends on the outcome of our little game. I told you one's life is on the line, but I should have elaborated and said it shouldn't necessarily be the player's life. So are you ready to play? At this point, I had a thought. How can James see me? I have no cameras connected to the Wi-Fi. My desktop camera is disconnected and I ripped out my laptop camera when I got the damn thing. Another option would be he broke into my apartment and installed cameras when I was out. But why would he risk getting caught like that? I may have cameras at home and catch him doing it. No, he must be using one of my devices. Doesn't seem like I have a choice, James. Let's play. I braced myself for what he would say. We've all watched those horror movies. These games weren't exactly Mario Kart sort of level. Suddenly, I knew. I wanted to throw myself from my apartment for how stupid I'd been. In my hand, I held the single device that had a camera and was connected to my Wi-Fi. My bloody phone. I didn't want to jump to the conclusion that it was the only camera that was being used, so I decided to test it. Before I could do anything, he begins to speak. Well, 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 Danny. I must say you've got balls. Most guys would have started to cry or beg me to stop. This will most certainly be fun. I had had enough of this shit. I started to test my theory. I started googling shit like how to track a phone call and how to find cameras in a house. I wanted to see if he could see my screen, and sure enough, the confirmation came through. Oh, Danny, it's cute you're still trying to fight back, but I can assure you, you will not be able to track this call, and you will not find out how I can see you. Challenge accepted, dickhead. I angle my phone away from my bag, and take out a USB dongle. If this asshole is on my Wi-Fi, I'm gonna make him think he's controlling all of my devices. I look for my laptop, whilst trying to make as little noise as possible, and again, angling the phone away from what I'm doing. I find the laptop, boot it up, and plug in the dongle. Yeah, well, I'm one tough son of a bitch. So when we playing, James, and do go over the rules properly, yeah? I like to whoop your ass playing with your rules, dipshit. My strategy was to show no fear. In truth, I was terrified. But I knew the instant he smelled fear, he would have total control over me. And I'd mess up and forget basic stuff like I had when this shit show first started. My laptop finished booting up. Excellent. I knew this guy was using my network somehow. So I decided to hack my own network and see how he got in. Maybe he left something behind. The rules are simple, Danny. You wanted to play judge, jury and executioner. We are going to go through your history of white knight justice and see just how much of a hero you really are. Hero, huh? There was a time when I thought I was a hero. 
Maybe it was when I made a child molester and his own life. I told myself I was a hero, because he wouldn't hurt another child. In truth, was I a murderer? Was this my past coming to haunt me? No time to think about it. It wasn't just my life on the line here. Everyone I care about is in danger, and there's no time to be selfish. Ha, hero. That's cute, James, but I've always known I was the devil. A necessary evil. But sure, let's walk down memory lane. Maybe that will remind you who the hell you're dealing with. My attempts were bringing up nothing. I managed to break into my own network many times, but I couldn't find a trace of another device. Not a trace of information transfer. Wait, information transfer? Outgoing and incoming traffic? Shit, I'm stupid. He can see a stream of my screen, which means I have outgoing traffic somewhere, right? I start monitoring my outgoing traffic. Encrypted, of course. But there was still an address, a server, that this information was going through. I find the address of the server, and decide to do something extremely stupid. I might sentence myself to prison, or worse, no access to a computer. But I decided to pay a small price for the safety of my family. Well, well, Danny. Watch your screen as the images pop up. Let's roll the tape, ladies and gentlemen. What a psycho. I don't pay that much attention to the tone of his voice, as I set up my botnet for a distributed denial of service attack. My hope is that if I bring down the server for a bit, I'll be able to see where the requests are coming from and track it from there. It's a long shot, but it might work. As I'm doing this, I also stop recording the call and send the recording over to my laptop. All the while I'm angling the phone away from the laptop. And since he hasn't spoken off, my theory that the only camera being my phone turns out to be correct. I finally feel like I'm making the right moves in this twisted game of chess. I'm hoping that I'll be the one to say checkmate at the end though. Victim number one, Brock, 16 years old. You destroyed his relationship and got him kicked out of his home. He spent three years on the streets before overdosing on heroin. That wasn't a nice thing to do, Danny. A picture of 16-year-old Brock pops up. He died? Shit. He was an asshole, but didn't deserve to die. I went too far. I went too far. But I couldn't admit it. Not to this psycho. I had to show him that I had no heart. Well, life sucks. Survival of the fittest and all. Maybe he should have been careful with who he messed with. Another disgusting laugh. James was enjoying himself. Maybe I should be. No time for that right now. I put the phone on loudspeaker and placed it on my desk. Wary that the front camera may be used as I kept well out of sight as I put my earphones into my left ear. Time to tweak around with this recording and unmodulate this voice. Danny, this isn't going to end up well if you show no remorse. Now the fun begins. Remember his girlfriend? It's confession time, Danny. As if it were alive, my PC opened up Skype and auto signed in. Shit, I was so stupid. Was I really that lazy? A number is entered into it, and it starts dialing. What do you want me to do, James? Tell her the online babe was me, and that Brock wasn't a cheating dickhead? What's that gonna change? My botnet was ready, and I started to attack the server's address instantly. I then watched my incoming and outgoing traffic closely. All I needed was a hiccup, something that would lead me to James. In that moment, it was like the entire world grinded to a halt. In that moment, 
It wouldn't matter to me if the moon was crushing down onto the earth to end all life as we knew it. All that mattered was this stream of information. I could hear the second hand on my watch ticking away. There! A clue! Phew. I was starting to lose hope. I start work on it. Did James notice? I'd imagine his connection to my network might have dropped since I saw a request ping but nothing going back. Was he too busy trying to guilt trip me that he got too cocky and didn't notice? My Skype was still ringing. Was she going to pick up? Hello? The girl's voice. She sounded kind of cute, actually. Is James hooking us up? Wrong time for jokes there. James speaks to me. Go on, Danny. Answer her. Tell her your name and what you did to Brock. I decide to play along. True, he didn't call me from my mum's number. But that doesn't mean he still can't hurt her. Liz? It's Daniel Kurt. We went to school together with Brock. There was a pause. I can't imagine how awkward this must be for her. I didn't have time to care though. I ran a search on the address. And whilst that was going on, I continued tweaking with the recording. Danny? That loony kid that used to get beaten up all the time. Ah, oh, what a bitch. Hooking us up my ass. I had to fight back the urge to shout and educate her ignorant ass on what autism was. Whatever though, not my concern. At least breaking the news to here won't be as painful as I thought. Yeah, that's me, the loony kid. I laughed, and I could swear I heard James laughing too. Asshole. So listen, I don't suppose you remember Brock Leonard. You kind of slept with him at the time. Maybe that weren't the best choice of words. Yeah, I remember him. I heard he died from a drug overdose. Makes me feel horrible breaking up with him. Another pause. Why? Shit. How do I do this? This is a confession. If she takes this to the police, I'm screwed. Any chance I have of getting away with this would be over. I was 16 though. Does it matter? I read somewhere that crimes committed before 18 aren't dealt with anymore. Was I a kid? Damn it. To hell with this. I needed to stop this madness before he makes this call a victim of an attack I committed after 18. Yeah, well, it's my fault he did this. He made my life shit when I was at school, so I decided to fight back. He never cheated on you. I made it look like he was. There was a really long pause, and it gave me time to work on the recording. Nothing remotely human yet and I was still searching for an address. Why is it taking so long? Her voice was extremely soft. I was expecting something else. An angrier tone would have made more sense. Danny? Yeah? I know. She knows? What does she mean? Is she connected to James? Or was this going against James' plan? Shit. Is she... James? Wait, how do you know? Another pause. What the hell is going on? How the hell does she know? My search comes up with something. James is definitely in the country. But I had to narrow it down. Why is it taking so long? I heard her taking a deep breath. I knew Brock was always faithful. It's why I stuck around. I wanted to leave him because he was a horrid person. Not to me, but to other people. I mean, look at you, Danny. You were bullied by everyone. But Brock kept taking it too far. And it wasn't just you. Other people would be pushed around by him every day. And I was sick of it. Another pause. Is she crying? I can definitely hear crying. I didn't want to cut it at all. I let her take her time, and after a few seconds she continued. I guess I was looking for a way out, 
and seeing this girl that Brock was supposedly cheating on me with was my ticket. I knew he was faithful, but I had to take this chance and end the relationship there. I just didn't. I didn't know his life would be ruined because of it. I mean, for crying out loud, we were just kids. Her voice had gotten louder now. I could tell she was beating herself up over this. I had to comfort her in some way. Liz, this wasn't your fault. He made the wrong choices in life and ultimately couldn't live with them. You were trapped in that relationship. You were under no obligation to continue with him. It wasn't your fault. I did this and I'll gladly take the blame. I've got to still ask though, how did you know it was me? She laughs. I guess that was a stupid question. I knew the answer before she said it. I'm not stupid, Danny. I know Brock isn't the type of person to get in trouble with anonymous or stuff like that. I snorted. I knew Brock pissed off someone who was good with computers. And the only person I could think of was you. I laughed. I didn't care if James was listening. I didn't care if he would blast through the door and shoot me in the head. I laughed at how stupid I really was and how I thought I was being clever. But a thought quickly wormed itself into my mind. James was not going to be happy with this outcome. Liz, are you with someone right now? My thoughts are to get her somewhere safe, somewhere James can't get to her without causing too much attention. No, I'm out. And then the line cuts. Liz? Liz? I pick up my phone. What the hell have you done, you twisted dickhead? There was silence. Not a single noise. I looked at my phone, puzzled. We were still connected. Where the hell did he go? This ain't time for a toilet break. Then I heard a sound. He's still there and he starts to speak. His voice changed, not modulated into something else, but his tone, he wasn't happy. Homo sapiens, an intriguing species. They never do things the way you accept them to. I hear a sigh. She will be dealt with soon. For now though, let's continue our trip down memory lane. Oh my god, he's going to kill her. Shit, I need to hurry up and find something. Anything. I can't let anyone else die because of me. I can't. Another picture shows up. The child molester that I scared the shit out of and ended up taking his own life. What sort of justice was James looking for here? If any at all. I started to panic. Why is he making me do all this? Surely if he knows I did these attacks, he has evidence. Why not just turn it all over to the police? All the more reason to find this arsehole. Jordan Fisher, age 36. You masqueraded as a child he molested and caused him to take his own life. Now you might think this an act of heroism, but if so, why haven't you told anyone about your heroic act, Danny? He was mocking me. He continued talk of heroism and disgusted me. I needed to find Liz. I needed to alert the police and let them know she was in danger. And what do you suppose you're doing now, James? Are you a hero to these people? Are you acting out their revenge? Wake up, shithead. These people are criminals. All I did was rid the world of them. I looked over to my search window. It was narrowing down, finally getting somewhere. Back to tweaking the voice recording. I felt like I was getting closer to finding out what the James voice was really like. But it wasn't male. It was definitely female. Well, anything that will tell me anything about James will help. One thing is certain. People feel safe as long as they're under the illusion that they're secure. 
once you break the illusion, once you burst the bubble, they start to panic. And one thing you can be certain of is that people who panic mess everything up. Human nature, I guess. James responds, Justice? I'm not doing this for justice, Danny. I'm playing a game with you. It doesn't seem like you understand what the game is yet. I feel sorry for you. Let's continue. Fisher had a daughter. Did you know that? She was 15 when her dad took her own life. Tell me, Danny. Don't you think she should know why her dad died? I mean, it's only fair, right? Time to confess. Oh, I almost forgot. Her name is Sarah. You'll need that for when you talk to her. As before, another number was dialed from my Skype and began to ring. She was 15? I was still 16 at the time. Shit. How can a child molester have kids? I deprived someone of her dad. But he was a monster. What have I done? Hello? Who's there? Help me. A girl. Her voice arching with distress. I could hear an echo. Where was she? And why does her voice sound like she's in trouble? James starts to speak again. Danny, you better answer her. Who knows what might happen to her? Another one of his laughs echoes through the phone speaker. He disturbed me. I guess I had no choice. Sarah, are you okay? What's going on? I thought it'd be best to check if she was alright first, before confessing to my crime. Chivalry and that bullshit. I... I don't know. I think I'm okay. I... I can't feel my legs. Her breathing rate started to increase. Who... Who are you? Where am I? Help me, please. What the hell's going on? Did James kidnap her? I needed her to calm down. The hell kind of twisted game was this? Just calm down, Sarah. Take deep breaths, and can you look around and tell me what you see? I turned to my phone. James was silent. I wasn't having it. It was time for some answers. Okay, James. What the hell is going on? What have you done to Liz and Sarah? James was quick to respond to this. Ten minutes, Danny. You have ten minutes. Find them. I was just as quick to react. Scoo trying to find James right now. There are innocent lives on the line here. I needed to find them. I needed to trace Sarah's phone. And I had an idea how. Sarah responds before I could do anything. Uh, oh, it's so dark in here. I see a camera on a stand in front of me. I'm in a chair, but I can't get up. I can't feel my legs. It's so dark here. Oh my god, what's going on? Damn it. He's probably using a burner phone. No good to me right now. Tracing it will take ages. Hang on. Sarah's 19. She has to have a smartphone. Sarah, listen to me very carefully. I need you to fill your pockets. Do you have a smartphone? And if so, what is it? And is it on you? I hear a few groans. Whatever James did to her was painful. My guess is that her legs were broken. Yeah, I have my iPhone. It's not dead. Should I call the police? She asks hesitantly. But I could tell from her tone she was happy she still had her phone on her. If she calls the police, she dies instantly, James says. If you don't want her to die, you'll have to find her yourself. Damn. I didn't intend to rely on the police anyway, but they would have helped. I needed to find a way to explain to her just how dire the situation was, without making her panic enough to call the police. I didn't think James would be happy with me, telling her in the conditions of our little game. My brain worked quick. Sarah, no need to call the police. I'm Detective Haynes. 
I have been looking out for you, as you've been missing for a while. Now I need you to tell me what your iCloud username and password is. I'll track you using Find My iPhone. I tried to keep my voice down and calm in order not to induce panic. She gives me her details and I log onto the iCloud and start the search. Within a matter of seconds, it shows the location on the phone. It's not far from here. Five minute walk? Got her location, James. Now let her go, I say. Another laugh. How the hell can someone enjoy this? Oh, Danny. I didn't ask you to give her location. I asked you to find her. Run, Danny. But take your phone with you. We still have a lot to chat about. It dawned on me. So why was she so close? And why did it give me such a long time frame for such an easy task? I had to physically find her. I dropped everything and ran. Before I left the apartment, I grabbed a small kitchen knife and wrapped it in a towel. I might need it. Although I doubt I'll be able to do jack shit if a real threat shows itself. I run to the address as fast as I possibly could. I rarely exercised, and when I reached the address, I felt like dying. I saw a large building in front of me, at least seven stories high. There were no bells to ring, so I banged the door as hard as I could. No reply. I didn't have time to waste. I tried to find a weak spot in the door. It was so old that it wasn't too hard. Remember how I didn't exercise? Well, try bursting down a door when you struggle to open a jar of honey. I looked around for something to use. There were a couple of bricks laying around. I grabbed one and threw it at the door, hoping there isn't anyone on the other side, but the brick just bounced off. I take it and start hitting the hinges of the door, and after a few swings, it finally lets loose. One hinge down, and no time to celebrate. And I kept hammering, until it finally broke loose. Sarah? Are you in here? Can you hear me? I run inside and look around hastily. There must have been twenty or so rooms in the building. I didn't have time to look through each one. Help, I'm here, help me please. That's Sarah. I run to where I hear her voice. Sarah, I'm here. Keep talking to me, I'm coming. Detective, I'm over here. Be careful, there's someone else here. I stop outside the door. Is James here? Would he risk exposing his identity like this? I'm running out of time. I take out the small knife and kick open the door. I step into the room, knife raised, steadying my breath. I look around the room. It's dark, and I wait for my eyes to adjust. I start to make out a chair with someone seating in it, a stand with what I assume was the camera from Sarah's description, and a figure standing opposite to me. A female figure. I couldn't quite see her face yet. My eyes were taking forever to adjust. I turned to face this figure while glancing at Sarah. Sarah, are you okay? I ask. I need to make sure she's fine before whatever is about to go down does. Yeah, I'm starting to feel my legs again, but I still can't move. There's another girl here, red hair, but she's passed out. She sounds relieved. I guess she thinks I'm a fit detective with dashing hair and stunning eyes. Oh, I do not envy her for the disappointment she's in. The red-haired girl was probably Liz. So this is the grand battle, then. At least it's almost over. Just as I'm about to address the figure, who I could only assume was James, I hear a voice coming from behind her. A familiar voice. Hey, Danny. I freeze. That voice. It can't be. No. It's impossible. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense but also terrified me. Who was the person I kept no secrets with? Who was the one person who knew everything I'd done? 
who was the one person who had access to my address, PC, apartment, phone, and everything I owned? Who was the one person I shared my heart with? My one true love. Angela? I whispered softly. The thought that my girlfriend, my heart and soul, had done this to me, crushed me. I felt tears rolling down my face. Of course it all made sense. This supreme hacker never did any hacking at all. She had installed cameras in my apartment because she was always there. She knew I didn't have any of my own. She had her address spoofed as my own because she knew that's what it was. She added James to my Facebook account because she had the logging details for my Facebook account. I shared everything with her. And the thought of her doing this never crossed my mind. Why? Why are you doing this? What are you doing? I don't understand. What did I ever do to you? I'm speaking through tears and can barely string together the sentence. My eyes adjust to see her. Angela, is she crying as well? Or am I hallucinating? No, those are definitely tears. Is she really James? Or did James threaten to do this too? Ta-da! She sings through tears. Are you proud of me yet, Danny? Did you enjoy our little game? To this point, I'm angry, confused, and tired. Why? The tears didn't stop. Instead, they increased in intensity. Why are you doing this? Why are you hurting innocent people? Why are you hurting me? I've only ever loved you and cared for you. Why? She laughs. Her face is fake, and I can tell that she still laughs. Why? She says in a mocking tone. Don't you know why, Danny? Don't you know why your lovely girlfriend is doing this, Danny? Did you not find it odd that I didn't introduce you to my parents? Ever? I did find it odd. She was always reluctant on telling me who her parents were, but I didn't mind. I loved her for her, not her parents. What has this got to do with anything? As I'm still searching for answers, it hits me. Her dad must have been a victim of one of my attacks, and I confessed it all to her. But still, if he was a victim to an attack from me, he must have been a criminal. Why is she doing this? Oh, it seems like you understand, she says, still in her mocking tone. My dad was David Jessington. You know, the drug dealer you put behind bars. I loved you, Danny. I still do. But when my dad was arrested, he made me swear to make whoever did this pay. I tried and looked for whoever did it. But after a year, I gave up. Then I met you and fell in love. I thought we could live our lives together forever. Then, you had to tell me that you wanted there to be no secrets between us. You had to tell me everything you've ever done, including getting my dad arrested. She then takes a breath and wipes away her tear, then continues. I spent weeks fighting with myself internally. I tried to forget that I was in love with the man responsible for me not being able to see my father. I tried, but I couldn't. Eventually, I went and visited my dad. I asked him if I still had to make the one who did this pay, even if it was someone I loved deeply. I pleaded with him to forgive me, but he looked at me and told me that if I had the power to avenge him and didn't, He'd disown me as a daughter and never forgive me. Her tears had returned, and she started to splutter as she spoke. Danny, I love you. I always will. But I swore to my dad, and if he ever finds out I let you go, he'll kill me. At least if I make it look like I made you pay, he'll let you go. And I don't care if I'm arrested. I don't care if you hate me forever. I love you, Danny, and that's why I'm doing this. My heart ached. I felt her pain. I felt her struggle. 
I wanted more than anything to just go and give her a hug and tell her it would all be okay. I dropped my knife and started walking towards her. I didn't care if she killed me. I didn't care if the whole world was against me. I loved her and I wanted to fight for her. With every step I took towards her, my heart began to flutter. It was like I was falling in love with her all over again. But she kept crying and raised her knife towards me. Tanny, please stop, please. I don't want to do this. I can't let you get close to me again. Please, Tanny, stop, she pleaded, but I didn't care. She realized I didn't care if I died. So she raised the knife to her own neck. I stopped and stared at her eyes, her beautiful hurting eyes. Please, Danny, I don't want to hurt you anymore. I can't do this. Please stop. I ran to her as she was about to drive the knife into her neck. I hold the blade with my bare hand and blood starts dripping from the fresh wound, but I don't care. I stare into her eyes and softly whisper, I love you, Angela. I always have, and I always will. I don't care who your dad is. I don't care if the whole world is on his side. I will fight for you, and I will die for you. Stop this madness. Let's face the world together. She continues to cry and drops the knife, and leans in for a kiss. I hear sirens in the background. Someone must have seen me breaking into the building and alerted the police, but I didn't care. I was in my own world, with the other half of my heart. What happened next was a blur. First it was the police, then it was an ambulance. Angela and I were arrested, but thanks to the witness reports by Liz and Sarah, I was released immediately. I attended Angela's hearing, and she looked happy to see me there. Her sentence wasn't too long, less than her father's, but I didn't care. I promised to her I'd fight with her until the end, and I meant every word. I kept visiting her. Every time I'd get a chance, each visit with a new gift, each visit with more stories to tell each other. She'll be out one day, and I will always be there for her. And when she does, We'll move away. I'm working hard, taking every shift I can, earning every penny. I won't hack ever again. I would ever take justice into my own hands again. Because even though I may have helped someone, I have also hurt another. And maybe they deserve it. Maybe what I did was right. But I am not justice. I have no right to claim to be. I have made some mistakes in the past. And maybe James was my justice. For now though, I know what I must do. And I have my heart set on the path I have chosen. Maybe I made the wrong decision. Maybe I should have let her die and continued my vigilante run. Maybe there is a place far enough away for us to run to where her father can't find us. But I don't care. My fight isn't over. It's only just begun.